Hello students, this is Rohit Bansal from Institute of Humanities and this is in continuation with the co questions that we post on Telegram and YouTube channel. So for today, the question on Hobbes is question number one. According to Hobbes in Leviathan, which of the following best describes his view on liberty? Option one, liberty is absence of external impediments to motion. Two, liberty is the ability to act according to one's will free from the influence of fear. 3. In state of nature, individuals have absolute liberty. And 4. Civil liberty is possible only under a sovereign authority, which restricts certain freedoms. See, when we talk about Hobbes and his views on liberty, we should understand where he is coming from. And Hobbes is not a thinker of freedom or liberty. Rather, Hobbes is a scholar of order. And for him, liberty can only come where law is absent. That means what? He is a promoter of the concept of negative liberty. And when we talk about negative liberty, we to understand that in a sense where state is absent, where state has not made law. Or if a state has made certain law, it has provided certain exceptions within the law where law will not operate. So Hobbes in totality is a scholar of order and he is not concerned about liberty, freedom, etc. And this is the reason why eventually in further development of scholarships, you will also come across another concept of liberty, which is the concept of positive liberty. What does positive liberty says? Positive liberty says ability to do what you want to do, freedom to do what you want to do. This will lead to the debates like capacity approach, developmental approach, so on and so forth. And Isaiah Berlin, in his famous essay, Two Concepts of Liberty, has actually highlighted these two debates on the two kinds of liberty. One being negative liberty, other being positive liberty. And in negative liberty, role of state is not beyond providing law and order. Now, when we see question number one, here option number two talks about liberty is the ability to act according to one's own will. Remember, this is a very... Uh, succinct example of positive liberty, doing what you want to do at your own will. Hobbes is not concerned about this. Hobbes' only concern is that state should be there to provide order, law and order, and therefore he will talk about negative liberty. So therefore the option would be option B, which is statement 1, 3 and 4. Now coming to question number 2. What does Hobbes suggest about the right to self-defense? Now see, when we talk about Hobbes' Leviathan, under that State is a beneficiary of the contract. State is not part of the contract. And when everybody, because they are so perturbed and disturbed in state of nature, when they try to do a social contract amongst themselves, and then they give all their freedoms to the sovereign state, they have kept just one thing with them, that is right to self-defense. Why? Because if a state is not able to provide you your security, or what if state itself becomes the taker of your life. So life, liberty, property, these are very prominent natural rights that state must pro protect. And if state is not able to do so, individual can have a right of self-defense against the state as well. Okay, so this is what question number two is about. What does Hobbes suggest about the right to self-defense? And uh, uh, I think option D should be the answer. It can be exercised even against the state if it threatens one's life. All over the constitutions, in, even in Indian constitution, uh, in IPC, there is a section on self-defense, right to self-defense. Got it? So when state is bound, state is there to protect your life and if state is taking away your life, then what is the use of the contract which the social contract theories like Hobbes, Locke, everybody will go on to promote. Okay? Now coming to question number three. Which of the following best explains Hobbes' view on liberty and law? Option A, liberty is fully realized only when state provides it. Can't be this. Why? Remember the concept of positive liberty. It's only in positive liberty when state will act more like a developmental association to provide you development opportunities and all. But this is not the thing. That will go into positive liberty. And Hobbes is not the promoter of positive liberty. Option B, liberty exists only in the absence of law. B is the most correct answer because your liberty is ensured only where 
law is not restricting your choices got it so we will uh, do away with option c and d liberty and law are synonymous no law and liberty are not synonymous at all law is there to constrain your choices d liberty is the capacity to resist unjust laws no Hobbes is not talking about any of these things unjust law or just laws this is also one of the major criticisms by of Hobbes that how does we ensure that the laws which are coming from the state are always there uh, or, or they are not being misused and all got it now coming to question number fourth which statement best captures the transition from Bodha to Hobbes according to the provided content so I think the most prominent answer would be C. Bodan led the groundwork, but Hobbes provided the first comprehensive modern theory of sovereignty. Why do we say that? There's a famous statement Boda was standing on the gate. It was only Hobbes who could surpass the gate or who could enter the gate. Why? Because, see, even from the times of Machiavelli and all, we see that something similar to the concept of sovereignty is coming up. They are talking about the centralized authority and all in the form of prince and all. But it is the Bodha who will for the very first time bring in something akin to sovereignty. But at the end of the day, he will not give absolute power to state. He will restrict powers of state in, with regard to the religious affair. If they are also, it, Bodha will empower church to regulate the religious practices of people. So therefore, Bodha is creating some limitations for the state and it is Hobbes only who say that no, sovereignty means absolute control of state, be it religious affair or the secular affair. Got it? So the most relevant answer or the more nearest answer to question number fourth is your see that Bodha although laid the groundwork but he was not give, able to give the complete theory of sovereignty because he put some restrictions on the sovereignty of the state. The four questions which were shared with you over the telegram and if you wish to continue and uh, get these kind of discussions on a regular basis please join our telegrams channel and you will also get access to YouTube channels. We are also coming with exciting courses on GRF and your professor exams. Uh, with this, I say bye-bye. Have a good day. Take care.